It's a green room. Yes, it is. Hi, Brett. Hey. I'm Bryce. That's Bryce right Hi, there. Bryce. Uh, we were talking about gambling just before we started here. Mm-hmm. You had a story as a child where your mother made you get like a like a she, like a parent who catches you si- smoking cigarettes yes she made you gamble she made me eat quarters <laughs> you that's eat? what it's you weird. had the bells you had to eat the cherries yep all, all of, of the it. bars all of it it was very weird i had to go see a stripper i'm 12 i don't know yeah no when the stripper knows you know they they see 12 year olds fucking every day and they're like <laughs> Not that. Come on, come on. We're better than that. Sorry, we're better than that. (laughs) And I was a little blonde moppet too, just a little. Oh yeah, were you blonde? I was a blonde, a toehead. That's what my dad called me. Toehead. Toehead. That's not nice. No, I thought I had a toe on my head. It sounds like you have a toe on your head. uh, It was toehead, and so because you looked like a toe. No, because toe is like T O H toehead. Toe is blonde. Where? I what? Don't, In what I language don't, is toe that, blonde? I don't know. Internet, uh, you know, you guys can look it up. Oh, I'm but, sorry, ba- yeah, I'm sorry, baby well, Brad. It's okay. It wasn't as bad as what he called my sister. Oh, no. Chubby. Oh, come on. <laughs> and she wasn't chubby. <sighs> he would call her chubby, and I was toehead. That's. Hmm. Yeah, he never apologized that's for that. That's not, yeah. But that's not. But we're talking about gambling. We're talking about gambling here. Yeah. We'll so get back. We so can get my to my dad. That. Mentally scars me. <laughs> and your it was mom. the 70s. But so your your mom had you go to a slot machine. Yes. Because I was curious. We were at the Denny's next to the Circus Circus. Okay. 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 And so you were in Vegas. Yeah, we were in Vegas. Mm-mm. And so then after, so she gives you a quarter. Yeah. And said, come, let's go to the slot machine. Yeah. And you can pull the, I mean, she's my parent. So supposedly it. At that time, it was okay. We did blow too, but you know, it, it was, was also okay to do that. That was back okay. Then it was the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you remember what slot machine w- it was? Was there? Was oh. this the time of themed slot machines? No, no. Okay. This was uh, uh, pa- it, it wasn't digital. It was mm-hmm. mechanical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's about all I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you never caught the bug. Never did. Did what? you? Um, here, uh, this is kind of related, I guess, sure. related to my my lens. I'm going to give to this, but okay. Uh, w- d- video games. Mm-hmm. When did those uh, enter your life? About at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Twelve years old. Atari, mm-hmm. the old Atari game. We played with that. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember when Pokemon came out mm-hmm. on a Game Boy. On, on the on the Game Boy. On that Game Boy. Uh, and I had Pokemon Blue, obviously, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just because it's the best one. And uh, they had—I don't know if you played it, but one of the little cities in there has a has a gambling hall. Oh, really? They have a little slot machine hall. Okay. So you go in, and this, the different machines might have had different probabilities. And it was also not really gambling because you could time it. It was kind of a skill thing, I sure. think. Sure. Uh, but that. Uh, that instilled in me probably a bad that gambling hook. Hook, yeah. Cause I, uh, cause I, I like video game gambling. Maybe it's because there's no there's danger. no real stakes. Right, right. Cause I'm not, and 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 granted, like I'm not a online poker player. I'm not. Like, I, I don't want to. I don't have an itch to lose all my money to, right. to cards. Right. Um. And I think I think it was a mixture of that Pokemon game, and for whatever reason, oh man, oh, there was a PC casino game. I don't know if it was a Hoyle game or what, mm. but it uh, it was like the they got a little bit of every you know they get a blackjack and you get a poker you get a key. I really like playing the Kino because I didn't understand how it worked, mm-hmm. but I do know that I always won a lot of fucking money. Okay, it was like. It was the worst in the worst perfect storm of of uh, uh, nature v nurture yeah. in that moment of yeah. like, oh, just just play Kino, just hit the buttons and then the money goes up. <laughs> You're always gonna win. Um, it's it's uh, it, it's and so it's tough because I'm also poor. Yes, and so I don't like throwing away money. End of statement. I realized that that my I never, anytime that there was a chance for me to pick up gambling, 
mm. something always happened that made it like nah. So oh, really? like uh, in my college years, and I was a bartender, and I had two roommates that were bartenders as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that sounds they, like a great recipe already. They would do a Wednesday night poker night, mm -hmm. and other bartenders from around the area in Houston would come over, and there'd be usually about twelve guys playing poker. Yeah. Like a lot of poker. And I would come home and they would have me play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you throw in 20 bucks or whatever, and they were spending some money. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but it was always games that it was never just a standard poker game. It was always some weird rules that. Like Texas Hold'em? But even more than Texas Hold'em. It was just a ton oh, like, like that. Two's Wild and. Yeah, crazy. The, cr the crazy number six lady. So I six never years. had enough. Queens. I never had enough time to really understand what the queen what you were really doing. Oh. And so, so after a while, I, I just realized I would lose money. So then I would just come home and I'd go, hey, and I'd put $20 down and just go to bed. I would just oh. be like, there you go. So I never really did it. And then yeah. the next time was when I went visit Doug mm -hmm. in Aruba. Mm, Jamaica. Uh, yeah, for not... I want to no. take you. Sounds like a song. So uh, <laughs> he... Uh, he had uh, he was working for a company out there and had a place. Yeah. And so I went for two weeks. And this was actually a week after the first kiss I had with EK. So that's a whole different oh. that's a whole different thing. You had, a, you had your first kiss with her, and then you go off to a magical tropical where resort. there's topless Dutch chicks, yeah. and I'm all it's all wasted on me. Because I'm being, like there. That they being are. Dutch was that something you could tell from? Yes. Oh, okay. Right. There, oh. there were Dutch. Yes, because yeah. you know their hinger dingers were out. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and that's a whole, that's a whole other, other topic. Thing. So um, I went uh, and I had some time to myself because Doug was still at work, yeah. and so they have casinos there. I was gonna say they have gambling in Aruba. Yes, customer? they do. Okay. Yes, they do. A uh, bit like is it is it. Is it like, oh, big, 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 there's a casino, or is it like more local like establishments? Uh, it's not like Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm. It's closer to maybe Vegas, like a nice, not yeah. fancy, but nice. Yeah, okay. And so, uh, again, I went and I brought $20 with me. <clears throat> and the first 10, I did like nickel slots. And it oh, was yeah. up and down, up and down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. And then I took the uh, $10 and went into the uh, the, the like casino the, like, where the cards were. Huh. And uh, and there was blackjack. Uh, not blackjack. No, it was craps. Craps. Ah. Uh, and so I was Dangerous. like, hey, I've never done this before. And he said, all right, well, and I go, what, what did I do? Yeah. And he said, well, you put... Your money, you know, place your money down. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, so I put my $10 down. Yeah. And he said, now roll the dice. So I was like, okay, roll how, the dice. And he goes, were, now here's. Were, were there, how many people were at this table? None. Just you and the dealer? Just me and the dealer. It was a, it was a light oh, day. That okay. Day. Yeah. And okay. I was like, okay. So then I, I roll and he goes, okay, now you got a six. So you have to keep rolling until you get six again. Uh, oh, unless yeah. you hit uh, uh, craps is very much a game you cannot play. Snake, yeah, snake eyes or eleven, I think, and then you crap out. There, well, there, there's a bunch of different numbers. Yeah, it's I don't even. We were we were actually planning on shooting an episode on craps. Oh, nice. Modern rug soon, but I. But it, yeah, it's like you you kind of bet on what the next specific type of role outcome will be. Right. And then sometimes your bets stay, but then sometimes you lose your bet. It's a whole, yeah. it's a whole thing. And I don't, it's too complicated to learn like that in yeah. a trial by fire, like blackjack or poker. You could, you could sit someone down and say, like, just do this. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Craps. I don't think you could do that. So what ended up happening is I rolled the six again Ooh. and I got $10. So now I had $20. Mm -hmm. So I took the $10 that I put down and I put it in my pocket and I said, all right, let's put $10 and try this again. And so we rolled and, and did the thing and, uh, and I lost and he's like, As all right. And, and I go, cool. Thanks. <laughs> And he's like, really? And I go, yeah. I mean, I made my money back. Why would I keep rolling? That's so... <laughs> that's very pleasant. Right? I know, very that's practical. A, that's a very beautiful <laughs> way to approach the world and interactions with people. Yes. Because it's smart. Like, that probably... I mean, if, if we were talking about a slot machine, then it would be even smarter. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you're up 
fucking cash out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, no one is interested on how how up you were. Right. They want to know if you left up. Did you left? Yeah. Did you did leave you. up? Yep. And uh, I mean, I was kind of even, and I was just like, all right, well, I'm going to go get lunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got El Condor Pasa in the chat says, that I kind of want to learn about Baccarat. Do you know about Baccarat? I know nothing about it. I, I, I. I think I like Baccarat. I've got a little Baccarat uh, app on my phone. I'll play that sometimes. Okay. It is, uh, you know how in some casinos now, they literally just play war? Okay. Like literally just w- war? Yeah. Baccarat is like a complicated version of that. Okay. So the idea is you uh, there's you don't do anything. All you do is bet. Okay. You don't choose to hit or stay or anything, so you bet on how the game's going to go. Right. And there's the dealer's hand and then the player's hand. Okay. Every, all the players share the hand. Wait, right? No, everyone gets their own hand. Okay. You get your own hand? <laughs> yeah, I think you get your own hand. Anyway, no, you don't. It doesn't matter. So you bet <laughs> on how the cards are going to turn out, and uh, there's a whole system of like when, uh, what number... And what showing number means you can you get another card or not. Okay. And it's not the highest number. It's not at all about, like, who has the most pips. It's literally uh, about the digital root of the number. So if you, so if you, have, a, if you have a 10, mm-hmm. uh, you have a 0. Okay. Uh, is, it, is that right? Wait. Is that right? No. You have a 1. Mm. But anyway, you, you you do that. It's it's technically a looping system. So when you go past nine, you go back down to to, to zero. It's mod ten. Mod that's ten. What Ben said. Yeah. Um. And so that's it. And then you bet on who won the hand or not. Okay. And uh, it seems cool. Uh, it seems like a game that has like a really v- v- only a very slight advantage to the house, mm-hmm. which is why a lot of places only do high rolling baccarat. Okay, I bet baccarat. Um, the, but the way I f- okay, so uh, that's that's ba- that's what baccarat is. The way I found out or got into baccarat is because there was a I don't know enough about this. <laughs> I just know that it was a TV show. Okay, for a minute uh, on in Japan. It was not a national show either. I think it was like a local, it was local to one of their, maybe Osaka. But it was a Baccarat game show where you had you had kind of a comedian host and then four guests on either side. And they had a little Android tablet where they could place their bets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they would like do this very dramatic Baccarat. Of like, you know, people are placing their bets and then it cuts to like some, I don't know, Mm, online dealer All lady right. that sounds very familiar who who she does the she does the flips and you follow everyone you see the reactions and so they do a bunch of different they would do a bunch of hands in this like 11 or 15 minute um show mm-hmm. and then they would also t- talk to the guests and make because they'd be like small entertainers and so they'd talk and they do challenges and games and things it was really cool um i liked it but it was not t- I don't think it was popular, so they right. stopped doing it. But I really liked it, and they had it on. They had it on YouTube, but they were rolling it on YouTube, so you couldn't watch anything past, and everything, and and everything expired basically. Okay. But it was a it was a it was a cool show, and I thought that was a really interesting way to like display that game because I think other people know it from like James Bond, right? Right. Um, and that was said earlier. Just read read Casino Royale, and it'll tell you. Yeah, F- Fearless Free. Thank you for that. And yeah. and because uh, it's it is a cool game, but you do always get that air of like elegance. But I think when you make a variety show out of it, yeah. And because it's a show, it's a short show. People don't know how Baccarat is played, so you have to teach them very quickly. Right. And so they had a they always had like a nice little in a little opening video of like here's how you play. You do do this. It's this. this. this, Yeah. Yeah. And and there's also the other thing. The other thing about Baccarat, which is kind of great, is like fucking you just trust. Just trust if you won or lost. Like just bet. Put your money down. You can't. Like there's you can't protest. Just put the money down and win or lose. Right. Right. Um, And so I don't know. I've been. I like have a weird fascination with Baccarat now yeah. because of that show. Have you ever had anything like that where you where something like very niche happened uh, and, it, and it took a, an outsized place in your in your headspace? 
it, uh, there's the the YouTube show uh, with uh, like a lot of the music shows that really break down music theory and all of that. Oh, okay, like and, a song exploder so, type of thing. Yes, yeah, uh, enough to where I, I I went into kind of being. Uh, uh, I'm not good at it, but uh, uh, putting songs together via, you know, clips, uh, you know, and that kind oh, like of sampling, thing. sampling, and, doing up. All, and and building beats and yeah. doing all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I'm okay at it, mm-hmm. but I really that really got in my head for a long time. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's it's for music in particular, like it's gotten easier to get into it just kind of across the board yeah you know the easy tools there are plenty of just easy things to just fart around with but even the more professional tools have gotten a lot more uh have gotten sophisticated and easier to use simpler to use yeah Yeah. um and so like sampling is now uh it's nothing it doesn't it's it's not a big to do right whereas you know in the late 80s early 90s it was a whole to do it was a whole fucking thing yeah i would love to learn how to do the I mean, I was a radio DJ, oh, yeah. and so I knew how to do good edits and transitions. You know, oh, I was great at that. Yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, that's why I got my first job was because I watched what everybody else was doing 30 minutes before my interview, and the guy actually said, all right, take the next 30 minutes. Oh, and, wow. And so I was like, they had the list of what you would read to, to make your cuts right, mm-hmm. but I kept going by my ear, mm-hmm. and uh, and they were like, yeah, you got the job, but but I so never good. went to that next level of doing the spinning a couple and then well, doing well, the turn, ir- ir- That's turntablism. Yes. That's turntablism, which is is a totally different beast. Yeah, you know, um, but it is also cool. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, I mean, you still there's still always a physical element to turntablism, mm-hmm. but even now, turntables are digital. Like uh, even when I was in college. Uh, who was it? Tractor, the the Native Instruments Tractor, yes. the DJ software. Yes, they had a uh, so the, it's a digital it's a digital thing. You could just do it on your computer, or if you had a, a physical mixer, you can do it. Yeah, but they would also have a thing where it was some sort of special uh, vinyl like disc, and so you would hook it up uh, onto a specific type of of uh turntable yeah and it would recognize it you would basically be able to use a real size vinyl but for a digital uh you know digital and you would you would you could drop in songs into the thing and then it would it would uh see it as that yeah yeah yeah. because because it's otherwise it's all doing everything in the computer right but um in college i never got into the, the turntablism stuff because i i i know that that is different from djing Right. That is different from DJing. And I was interested in DJing, especially in college. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> so I would do these little DJ mixes. But instead of having like uh, a dedicated, you know, like a CDJ, mm-hmm. you know, or uh, a, like any of the home good, you know, the smaller stuff, I literally had a, a Korg, uh, what is it, a nano control. Okay. It was their mini USB. I had one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. thing that's like that big. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because it'll sit right in front of your laptop. It sits too. perfectly right there. Yeah. And I had all, I had all of them. I had that one, which was like a little mixer. Yeah. The, t- the I had the keyboard. Yes. Which was the laptop keys. Yes. And then uh, the drum pad. Yeah. The little drum pad. With so the, you had oh, all three. I had all three. Yeah. Nice. And uh, and so I would use those as my MIDI device for yes. control. So I would have all my faders would be different things. My little knobs would be different things. And it was it was fun because I had made it myself. Right. Mm-hmm. I configured it all myself and so i knew what the drum hit what the drum pads would do and i did and there's something like really cool about building something like that yourself yeah, building yeah. whatever i want to get you a chaos pad the chord chaos you know that uh the drum pad mm-hmm. has a well it has an xy touch sure pad, but it's not uh, and then uh, uh um oh what is uh, um uh, our buddy Trey, Trey Warren, has been letting me borrow his uh, push, his Ableton push. Yes. Which is like the super fancy right. sequencer stuff. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I've been, I've also been out of music. A I mean, bit. I, me too, even though Bitwig keeps staying there. Because I use, I went, I went from Ableton Live to Bitwig. I don't which know Which is basically the young guys that were uh, working at Ableton Live bailed. 
and oh, started Bitwig. Interesting. And uh, it's a lot of the same stuff. Uh, in fact, you can open an Ableton Live session in oh, Bitwig. Oh, interesting. So if folks don't know much about Ableton, like if you think about recording software, you know, you think of, you know, 20 tracks and mm-hmm. the big mixing board. Mm-hmm. And with Ableton, it is set up more like a uh, like a toy in some cases, in like a way. you see a lot of bands use it for live performances yes. because you can trigger it. You can trigger clips. You can make clips and samples and things. Um, and so uh, that uh, uh, that's cool. I'm excited about that because I feel like Ableton itself is so different from all those other um, like dubbing uh, uh, software. Yeah. And so I'd be interested to see what the next what those guys do to twist it even more. Yeah. Because I like that. I like Ableton because I can just play around mm-hmm. and then eventually write a song. Yeah. I know? split I split my time between Bitwig, Reaper, and uh, and uh, Adobe Audition. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm doing, if I'm doing sound design, mm-hmm. I'm using Adobe Audition. And if I'm just, I don't care what I'm doing, then I usually use Reaper, especially for doing live recording because it's so cheap. Mm. And then, uh, and then Bitwig is when I just want to, okay, let's get eight bars of a loop, throw it in there, see what I can build, yeah. and then start twisting things up and making it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. more interesting. I'm, I'm doing a lot of math music stuff. Oh, okay. It, like where, uh, time signatures and stuff. Well, it's not just time signatures, but I go, okay, I'm going to apply this easy chord progression. All right, now I'm going to split it up, and instead of it being a chord progression, I'm going to add a plug-in that gives it a... Uh, um, Harmony? A, no, the... Um, a round? It, it's where it splits it into single notes, and then it's like a melody. It'll create a melody off of that. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. A, and uh, I, keep, I can't remember like the Like an, arpe- an arpeggio? Ar- arpeggi- arpeggiator? A, a, arpeggiator, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, then I go, okay, cool. Now yeah. I've got that thing, and then... Now I'm going to drop a, a thing that humanizes it a little bit sure. to where the velocity and when the notes hits are a little bit off. And I can actually dial that, mm. dial that to say, look, only 20% of the time, I want you to humanize it 20%. That is so fascinating because I, I, I know about that, right? Mm-hmm. Like the best thing you can do is do small adjustments to things so that they're not perfectly on the beat. Right. Um, I didn't know there was like a plugin for that. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Because I'll bring my I always laptop. See, yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. Yeah, because I know there's the opposite. Also, there's quantizing. Yes, where it it fixes right and 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 I've used a lot of that. And then you can put a swing on it. You can hit some swing on it. Sure. And actually, now they have humanize for that as well. Oh wow, that's cool. So yeah, yeah. huh? The technology. Yeah, I I feel like I'm in this phase of 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 finding new technology yes like i you know between like obviously there's all the ai stuff um which is burgeoning Mm -hmm. um but then even like software stuff i uh don't always uh know like what the new thing is what the next hot thing is right um and so i don't know like i'm looking at computers right now and computers have changed a lot yes and i don't and and i've the the, the, the big thing is that, uh, uh, like the computer that I use at home, my desktop, I've it works. I've mm-hmm. had it for a long time, mm-hmm. and I don't really want to change it mm-hmm. or make any big changes to it. Um, but now there's now there's all these graphics cards. Mm-hmm. There's they're gonna there will be AI chips and AI cards. Yes. I'm sure. Yes. Um, at at some point, um, but I I don't know. I do feel a little out of it. I I I. Yeah, I'm trying to really what I'm trying to do with my music stuff and doing all of that, all of, is get something close that sounds interesting to me, mm. and then I break it down and give it to musicians and say, "Here, do something with this part. Do mm. something with this part." And mm. I think that makes things more like Reed, uh, the guy who's come to the show a few times. Yeah. Reed plays bass, mm. and we do kind of music stuff together. Oh, fun! And and yeah, that's you know. I, I, but unfortunately, I've been kind of out of music. Mm-hmm. I was depressed for a while, and I realized, man, that just shut yeah. that shut it all down. Yeah, man. And uh, now I've got to get back into it again. Yeah. So well, it's good that you want to get back into it. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. The, um, there's 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 a very it's a very high rope act for me right now. I don't yeah. Know. I'm I'm. Uh, uh, 
I found a story today that I want to talk about. Tell me. About AI. Okay. Artificial intelligence. Sure. Uh, Do you know one Eric Adams? He's the mayor of New York City. Yes. And uh, uh, he's in the news. This is The Verge. Uh, NYC Mayor Eric Adams uses AI to make robocalls in languages he doesn't speak. That's interesting. That's an interesting conundrum. But you got to have someone who understands that language to say, yeah, that's not gibberish. Sure, sure, sure. And, and, and I think at this, I mean, if that, if that was part of it, if that was part of what we're talking about, then that would be the headline, right? Like, Eric Adams uses a <laughs> robocall and he doesn't even get it right. Yeah, you know, that's it would, true. It would be that kind of thing. Um, so um, this is... <laughs> Albert Fox Kahn, executive director of Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, stop, <laughs> said, quote, this is deeply unethical, especially on the taxpayer's dime. Using AI to convince New Yorkers that he speaks language he, languages he doesn't uh, is deeply Orwellian. Does it? So, okay, so then here's my next question. Is it that it's taking his voice it is. And applying it into those languages. Okay, I thought that he was just using it as a translated and... Oh, and then he... No, it's it's also doing the AI voice. Okay. And speaking. And um, I, I think it's cool. Yeah. I think it's fine. Unless he's saying in that language, hi, this is Eric Adams, your mayor, and boy, am I loving speaking this language. Well, right. I, I don't think it's that. And yeah. It, I think he's like campaigning right now or something, but yeah. but they're they're talking about like you know we want to put chat on the website to make it easy for people to get their stuff or right. uh, we want to use because I because it is a good idea I think it's a great idea sure of like hey there are people who want to get alerts on, via the phone it, the New York is a melting pot probably would be good to have language options especially if there's a way to make it happen yeah relatively easy sure. Uh, Do you think that those people who were mad at him are truly mad or just uh, hmm. just bad actors, you know, bad faith actors? Yeah, that's a good question because I don't, I don't think there's a mistake here. No, I like I think it's a cool idea. Yeah. Um. So I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I would, I would love to hear more. They kind of didn't really poke very hard at this. I yeah. think because it, the it sounds fine. Like it's not, I don't know. I don't know a lot of Spanish, but it sounds like Eric Adams is speaking Spanish to me. Sure. And so I, 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 I what? I guess I, I guess the the op, the opposing side, the yes. flip sides here. Sure. Is well, you couldn't hire a translator or another voice talent to do your robocalling for you. I mean, um, you know. The questions of accuracy are abound. Sure, but that seems like a problem that fi- that that un- unearths itself. It's got good enough, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I obviously have thoughts about AI taking over for voice actors. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in fact, I've been pretty passionate about it. Um, in this case. Because it is, it is the mayor's voice. Presumably, it's all sure. On so it's his voice. His voice. Um, I mean, it's a technology that's around. There's no reason. It's not illegal. No, I, I don't even think that that's necessarily unethical. No. Uh, I mean, we kind of go back to. I would have a problem if it was trying to pretend that this is actually Eric Adams saying yeah. these words. You know, I know how to speak this language. Look at me. Uh, that that would be the problem that I would have. Yeah. I feel like there's probably a um there's a whole conversation to be had about how we divulge AI and generated material. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh I do I have a couple of email lists that I do, like for marbles and for the F one stuff. And what I like to do is I like to pepper in that the Substack has like an image generator. Yeah. So I'll make it make little funny things and that's that's pretty good, but I always make sure to say in the caption like generated image. Now, granted, you can tell, yeah. like you can tell Kermit the Frog didn't look like that, right? You know, um, but 
I feel like I do need to have that. And now Adobe have their, um, they have a, they have a little symbol for for a, for partly generated media. Okay. That it's like a little CR. Okay. It's not a CC, but it's a little CR. Ideally, you hover over it and it says like, oh, this was made in Photoshop and yeah. parts of it used AI, some some amount of that. Sure. Um, and that seems fine in a metadata sense, but I don't know. I, I think in the Eric Adams case, like I think if this is an issue and if this is an issue people really had, then maybe you get around it by like starting off in the, in the language saying like, hi, this is a generated message right. from Mayor Adams or something. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't want to um, paint a target on AI stuff either because I think there are a lot of really interesting use cases of it. Yeah. But I think people generally want to know when that happens. Yes. Um, even if it's good, even if it's fine. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we've got Curtis in our chat who is, uh, uh, isn't in, in New York. New oh, York. Okay. Um, uh, there is a far from significant, ins- excuse me, there's a far from insignificant portion of the target population that have no idea that that's not him speaking. In fact, uh, in, in that Verge uh, article, uh, he, uh, S- Adam said at a pre- press conference, I was excited when I had my voice go over the, per- the phone to a person who speaks Mandarin, and they were able to hear their mayor speak to them in their language. People stop me on the street all the time, and they say, I didn't know you speak Mandarin. Right. Does he, he does, dis- does he disabuse them of that? Does he tell them? Well, no, I, I mean, that was just AI. I guess so. I'm so glad that I communicated with you, but just know that that was AI. Uh, he, he continued, is this ethically right or wrong? I got one thing. I got to run a city, and I have to be able to speak pe- speak to people in languages yes. they understand. Yes. To all, all I can say is ni hao. <laughs> so it's... I, 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 I don't think it's a, a vanity thing or... or um, I, I don't know. I, I like. I, I think it's fine. It seems fine to me. Yeah. Uh, Scooper uh, Nova Girl says so. so learn, learn the, the language. language yourself. I guess that's the thing, right? Like, do you have the time to do it? Do you, you busy running a city? Right. I mean, I, I think. I think the. I think the. The. Uh, Would it be better if they used AI translations and he self-recorded them, even if his accent and pronunciation was fucking wrong? Uh, if, if it, uh, for favor, poor Estados favor. Unados <laughs> be loving Bon Jor, Bon, bon Jove, Bon Jovi, everybody. Me amo. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, I, 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 I think, I think that if, so I, I don't know anything about Eric Adams. Okay. Let me, let me just say that. So I can come at this as completely in. Uh, a neutral party. Yeah. Uh, I think that it would. It's not a bad thing that if you can communicate with people that you wouldn't, who would normally not be communicated with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's a good thing. It seems like a good thing reaching out to people. Yeah. Where they are. I mean, it's not lives. perfect, but I was like, but you know, like they say, uh, uh, good enough is the enemy of perfect. Yeah. Good enough for government work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got a we've got a little troll in our chat asking if it's uh, immoral to uh, <laughs> to learn and sing in Japanese, which I don't know. I, I she's now she's giving me a look. No, uh, Ashley's <laughs> over there in the corner. <laughs> too busy. If I'm too busy, you're too busy to, too busy to, to learn. Oh, yeah. because you're too busy learning how to sing in Japanese. So I'm too busy because I'm well. Th- okay. Well, I think I think learning learning Japanese through music, granted. Yeah, in fifteen years, it's right. taken a while to get here. But I do feel like I okay. am. Wives are allowed. <laughs> We've been told that wives are not allowed in the green rooms. I was gonna leave um, I, no. But now, because I've really gotten into this artist and I really gotten into a lot of her songs, yeah, I know the translations. Mm-hmm. And now, when now I listen to the lyrics or the songs, I've talked about this before. Where like in my head, no. I'm doing an English version, right. or sometimes I will just sing an English translation of. Whatever the song is. Yeah. We've got uh, one Justin Robert Young, AI ethicist. 
Yes. To join us here. Yes. I am. And I have my wife. Hello, Ashley. Oh, it's Ashley. Oh, she was standing hi. over the corner. You to talk into the mic. I was going to talk into yours. No, no. No, no, no. We Brian will be here eventually, and then you'll have to leave. Okay. Yeah. Eric Adams is using an AI voice yeah. to do robo Can you do an impression of Eric Adams? Could not. I couldn't. I, I, Can you? I am, I, as I had said before, I am totally neutral party in this. Oh, I'm really the mayor. Know much. I don't know much about Eric Adams. Former cop. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Likes parking on the sidewalk. Oh, all right. Because uh, uh, cops uh, uh, in New that. York do that, do that all the time. Sure. Uh, and uh, uh, he does that. And also might not live in New York. He might live in Jersey City. What? Oh. You can't do that. You're the mayor. That was, that was a thing before he became mayor. Sure. That's like. They needed to see the certificates. Was that, was that they were demanding to see uh, the, no, the housing? Because he's vegan. Yeah, the classic the housing. Long, uh, the long form housing certificate. He is, he is, he's vegan, and so he, he he had taken a lot of social media things about like here's here's what I eat here. Blah blah blah. I don't know why Eric Adams is the uh, male voice in the Barbie song. Yes. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, Bobby, here's all my vegan food. Uh, and, Thanks, Eric. And then, and then they determined uh, uh, that is definitely not his apartment in Brooklyn that he says that he has. <gasps> okay, it was definitely his girlfriend's apartment in Jersey City. And so then he led uh, reporters through what he said was his Brooklyn residence, but it was almost assuredly his son's place oh. <laughs> because there were like Air Force Ones and stuff like that. And it's like. A grown ass man does not live here. A yeah. teenager lives here. That's that's wild. Like uh, uh, in in my experiences with government jobs, you got to live in the city where yeah, you're working. That's, that's a pretty simple thing. Yeah, uh, and I was well, even well, the well, once, mayor. They, once they once they decide. Uh, who they're backing, though? You know, that's that's there. there there's a lot that goes into ba- it. Back mm. in the day, Mattress Smack. Uh, yes, it, he ran for mayor, and then that's when he realized, oh, I don't live in Houston. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He lived. He lived uh, north. I feel like I just did a downgrade by showing up. <laughs> I definitely did a downgrade by talking. That <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got one Brian Brushwood here joining yo, us. Yo. Yep. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Snap judgment here. Uh, New York Mayor Eric Adams is using AI voice to send out robocalls in foreign languages. Thoughts, immediate impressions, first impressions. Well, I, uh, his own voice. His own voice. Speaking those languages. Dude, yeah. Uh, I hope everybody loved it because I want to do that with all of my old videos. I want to take everything Justin and I have ever done and I want to read Put it into it. Hindi. Yep. Mm. Yep. And in our voices. Yep. Uh, it, we they, we we could talk about poop and farts mm-hmm. and, and butts and there we go in yep. Farsi. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, yep. In in uh, uh, a, a Parisian mm-hmm. dialect. Yep. Oh my gosh. Uh, in Parisian. In Swedish. In Swedish. Uh, in Russian. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe we can unify the world with our 15 years of dipshit comedy. Just that one racist Captain Morgan bit. Oh my god. It's gonna right. play yes. really big in Pakistan. <laughs> yep. Look at these guys. They're these these amateurs. They're already giving up the next show. Yeah. No, it's foreshadowing, dickhead. <laughs> Let uh, it sit. You gave Okay. Okay, so something that didn't make it into the main show. So I'm in the I, I told Justin, I'm gonna tell you guys now. Okay. Uh so the day of the eclipse, and we'll talk about that that, that day. It was wonderful. Okay. Um I pretty much only ate the bean and cheese tacos all day those are good yes um Mm -hmm. recently (laughs) i have become lactose intolerant Mm. late onset lactose intolerance yeah (laughs) when Uh, when? uh, uh, over the last year like uh oh uh yeah bonnie has suspected it and said and i've rolled my eyes but like like a week and a half ago like i just i'm like i feel great then i drank a glass of milk and i'm like Oh, blah, oh, blah, oh, that oh, far. Oh, oh yeah. You know, like, uh, it was awful, right? So it was like, oh, I'm definitely lactose intolerant now. Yeah. And yeah. then meanwhile, jo- <laughs> Josie's rolling her eyes. It is just like, welcome to club, dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure she said it exactly That's like that. That's my time. Uh, actually, knowing, knowing <laughs> Josie, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so then I'm going to guess those bean and cheese tacos, maybe not ideal for the old digestive system. Uh, you know what? I felt great all day and I was, it's time to go to bed. Big, long day, very tired. So I go up and I, I, I take, I take just a satisfying shit, you know, just a, and then it's when like, you say uh, satisfying, like Snickers, what's, 
when you're know. when uh, you're taking a shit, <laughs> like what's the thing that makes you think, damn, this say, is a satisfying shit. You get the what, shiver afterwards. One and a half, two and a half pounds, like you know, like when you're taking a smooth <laughs> shit, <laughs> rolling I mean, out of your butt like it's a slow train car, <laughs> plopping into the water with no sound because yep. it knows mm-hmm. it's time for shit. Oh no 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 that that's the kind of shit you take when you're not having milk on and being lactose intolerant uh, when you're firing bullets <laughs> <laughs> like no, you're it's... nolan Ryan and ryan in 1989 <laughs> splashing the water to the point where the outer ends of your ass are wet <laughs> You know you're taking a satisfying shit. That's right. Yeah. So uh, uh, have one of those, and I'm like, whoo, that's a... That's so the second one. That's a big one. <laughs> two. Uh, I, I, Truly I, a number I two. I clean up, and I'm like, uh, good night, house, and, and I close the door, and I lay what down a way to What a way to ring out the day. <laughs> you did good flush. night, domicile. Yeah. <laughs> that's my time, y'all. Good night, <laughs> Earth. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I lay down. And and I'm actually drifting off to sleep when there's a knock at the door, and I'm like, "Wait, yeah, a yeah. real door, or a metaphorical door, uh, a real door, <laughs> a real door," <laughs> because I'm sleeping up in the studio, right? Uh-huh. And, and so, I got that. Um, yeah. I got it. Uh, uh, knock at the door, and I'm just like, uh, "Yeah, come on in." And then the, I expect it to be Bonnie, but instead it's Josie, and she goes, <laughs> "Dad, did did you take a shit?" And I was like, "Yeah, no, uh, it's the end of the day." Uh, 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 Satisfying. Uh, yeah. uh, it was super steep. Daughter, you need to know <laughs> that and, this shit was very satisfying. And then Josie says, "Dad, uh, I, I, I can smell we, uh, the smell." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's pretty bad. I had all those bean and cheese tacos. Turns out I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, just I'm learning this. Good night." And she goes, "Dad." We were downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That was like, oh, sounds like it was pretty bad. Yeah. Good night. Okay. <laughs> All right. Turn, pa. Yeah. Close the door. <laughs> she turns on the fan. Door closes. Me sleep. The like sleep, sleep the of baby. an angel. Yes. Like, like I'm like. <sighs> Have you ever had one of those dreams where it's a dream about trying to go to sleep? Yes. Okay. This has been a thing I've slowly realized is that the first dream you have of the night is you trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Yes. Wow, so, man. Yeah, dude. Whoa. My thoughts. Wrap your head around that. My thoughts. So in this dream. The last dream is I, real life. Uh, uh, <laughs> in this dream. Uh, so I, I go to bed uh, slightly before 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, I'm having this dream just after midnight. And uh, in the dream, I don't remember what gig I'm coming back from, but I know I'm in a hotel or whatever, and I know it's important that I go to sleep, right? And then I lay down, I I, I know in the dream that I took a shower and it's all, everything's ready, I'm going to bed. And in the dream, I fucking blast an arc of diarrhea shit. So far, it goes from the bed I'm on to the other bed, and and it's splash zone. Just off. Well, hold on, sorry. Other shit, bed. moo over here. Other bed. Can, can te- put that into objective. What does that mean? Why is there more well, than one bed? Because 20... I'm in a hotel. Oh, because okay. I'm on the road. Oh, you're in a hotel. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I missed yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, and you don't what? have pants on? Uh, You're just Winnie the Pooh in it? Le, uh, <laughs> Donald Duck? Blasting sure fucking bla- blasting, sure uh, uh, Bellagio fountains of shit out of your ass? Yep. Oh, Porky Pig? Uh, 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 Dreams are really good at kind of graying out those details, right? Yeah. All I know is like I've so blasted. Is but you're just shit. saying that canonically for this story, that's the mental picture we're putting in everybody's yes. mind. Sure, sure. There we go. Either that or blasted sword. It went through, through. whitey tidies. <laughs> <laughs> it launched. It actually off. launched the white tidy whiteies across the room. It, it blasted a hole there through the whitey tidies. <laughs> you said jean. You said pants. You were trying to be generous. You didn't yeah. hit him with the whitey tidies right away. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I was saying Winnie the Pooh. Mm. No pants. No pants. Yeah. 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 So in the dream, that happens. And it's so awful that it wakes me up. I, because in the dream, I'm like, oh, God, I just got clean. I soiled myself. I'm covered. I'm going to have to clean. I'm going to. I wake up. Okay. 
No. 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 <laughs> and no. I, come on. And this I, is no. A, this, is, this is Brian's no. inner monologue. No. Oh, I, I freeze. I Did you do a train spotting? Is that what happened? <laughs> For a full five seconds, I experience Schrodinger's shit. <laughs> Can we pause? Yes. True story. The most terrified I've ever been on a plane. <laughs> I fall asleep, and I have a very, very, very realistic dream that I am peeing in my old house's bathroom. No. And it's a lot. The, the, very rarely in your dream do you remember peeing. Yeah. And so I'm like, like oh, wow, this is a dream. Like, I'm, I'm peeing. Wow, I'm peeing. Oh, Jesus. Peeing a lot. Mm. Really long pee. Oh, no. Wake up. I'm on the plane. And I'm like, oh, this is, no. This is the same thing. So yep. we're at the same moment. Same point. Right? Okay. So uh, so I've woken up and I- Did you shit yourself? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. <laughs> and then finally I have the courage to move my hand around to uh, my underwear butt. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Where everything seems dry. <laughs> oh, and I check. And that's when he checks. So. <laughs> and then just to make sure, I get up and I go to the bathroom, and there's nothing, nothing. Very Apparently, good. I ripped a fart and it woke me up, and uh, that was the dream. <laughs> uh, how did yours go? I assumed it would have been the smell okay. from the. I yeah. really assumed it was the smell from the bathroom, bringing us full circle to the oh, beginning no, no, of. No, the this was hours later. My sleep, yeah. yeah. I, and, yeah. and and that was what inspired that also, moment in the dream. Jo- Josie's what, 14, 18 now? Yep. <laughs> 14, 18. Yeah. And so, she's and she's split just, the diff. Split yeah. the diff. Somewhere in there. So somewhere in there. And she's just now getting into this like dads have stinky shits. Oh no. No, 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 no. This shit was, was so stinky. I mean, yeah. still. It's that's part and part. That's was who coming. you find as the villain of this story. No, I'm just being nip- I'm just being judge- judgy. Yes, <laughs> I'm just being judgy. Good. Okay. The villain is obviously yeah. the plumbing. Yes. Me, the bystander. The the There's some weird vent that's going on yeah. there. Oh my yeah. goodness. Well, obviously his poison vent firing all this stinky mm. gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ek tells a story of. Five minutes. Uh, okay, thank you. Ek tells a story of when we went to Japan. Uh, we went to a proper uh, 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 old school bathhouse mm-hmm. out in the country, up in North uh, Japan, and to see the. We went out to see the leaves changing and all of that. And there's this wonderful place, uh, tr- very traditional, an North, onsen, an onsen, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. have the hot springs. Yep, they have the sulfuric hot springs indeed and we did enjoy that mm-hmm. uh, uh the whole thing and it was uh, in fact it was on our that's birthday. where they also have the anime yes the anime from the 90s <laughs> uh it's very close <laughs> very very influential <laughs> and uh so afterwards we she wasn't feeling well so we went to bed early and in the middle of the night she woke up to this smell coming from her and she was like did I, did I fart in bed? And then she goes, did I shit the bed? <laughs> and it ended up because you soak in sulfur springs after a while. Oh, you're farting sulfur. I mean, you're just, you it's just, just you, your whole body's you just, it's like you're in central Florida. You get nose yeah. blind, you get nose blind. And then for her, it all just came back. And my favorite thing was her going, did I fart in bed? Did I shit the bed? <laughs> it's like my wife, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in Japan, they should have been running the babbling brook. So you didn't know whether or not you shit the bed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It makes the noise. I've been, we, we did uh, witness one of those toilets. I think that's like the norm, right? It makes Ash? the noise. What? Where they, they all, all the public women's restrooms have the babbling brook. A lot of them do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because women don't poop nope. or fart. Nope. No. Which is weird because a babbling brook doesn't make sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, th- uh, this is this is going to be a blast from the past. Uh, but, uh, literally. But, uh, they should put more ducks in the soundtrack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, ner- nerdtacular, I want to say six years ago or so. Uh, I remember, I, I think we told this story on Night Attack. 
but both Tom and I were in a public restroom and we both went in at the same time and it was awkward and I pulled out my phone to like just play literally anything and before I hit play I hear like classic rock coming from Tom's <laughs> stall <laughs> it was we're in this together brother <laughs> oh man uh. Uh -oh. thank you three oh. <laughs> So, how have your shits been? My oh, my shits have been uh, solid. I actually had a horrifying moment yesterday because uh, we went back to our, our house as being uh, the new floors are going in. And so we went back to see what the progress was. But I also had to shit all day. And I was like, oh, I want to shit. In, in my, my bathroom. house. Yeah. And we have one bathroom that has a fancy ass bidet on it. Yep. So I went into the room with the fancy ass bidet and I took a shit and uh, I hit the button for the fancy ass bidet. Normally it goes boop and then all sorts of tremendous waters go shooting into my butt and yep. clean it. Unfortunately, it was inert. I hit the button again. So. Nope. Nothing. Oh, I hit the dude. button again. No. Nope. Nothing. It turns out that uh, the bidet had been unplugged. And so I was well, like. You could just use toilet paper. They had also taken away the toilet paper <laughs> oh, because they were ripping up the floor. So I'm like. Did, did you have to do the walk? No, because <laughs> it turns out I'm, I've actually been on my, on my diet recently. And. Uh, I, I my my shits have been clean. Mm. I've had good clean You've shits. You've had dog shits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They just slide right out, yeah. and like normally they would be they would be clean very so very you easily. You weren't eating bean and cheese tacos. No, all no. Day. And, and nor <laughs> nor is he lactose, lactose intolerant. intolerant. Yeah. No. Right. So your farts today say otherwise, but. Well, now I've been off my diet because we've been eating takeout. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yesterday <laughs> everything was good. <laughs> And so uh, I was like, I think I'm just gonna roll. I think I think that's must, must I think nice. that's just gonna be yeah. it. Must and I rolled. Nice. I rolled out. And then I I mean at, at the next earliest opportunity. I I mean then you know. took seven. Refresh. But you want to know what? Like barely, bar barely a Rorschach. <laughs> no, it, it, barely a Rorschach. If, if, if you do enough. <laughs> if you do enough, hey, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. My, my, no, no, my wife, perfect. My, my, uh, yeah. Can I do it? No, 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 no. no. My, my, my wife wants to see disgust. Here, go ahead. <laughs> no, That's it was it. perfect. That's it was pure disgust. It sounded a little bit like this. It was. God. <laughs> <laughs> is is the trick uh, what uh, spinach and beef? That that's what gives you the pebble turds. No, not pebbles. No or logs. No, you want when you're really eating. When you're eating when, clean. When you're, when you're eating. When you're, you're eating, eating clean. clean. <laughs> you're getting. You're getting a full <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a full a, a scope of your intestines <laughs> just pouring out like it's the seven train through Midtown. <laughs> when you want a ceramic diagram, <laughs> like all right, I'm done. Right, Ashley's leaving. <laughs> you want to eat a bunch of you spinach. want the you want the snake. That's what you want. No, it's it, it's 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 protein and not a lot of. Uh, uh, grease, not a lot of uh, yeah. uh, saturated fats, sure. I guess. So lots of beans and cheese. No, I don't need a lot of. I don't need a lot of lactose in general. Yeah, because most of the stuff that I eat with her, like I, have, it's mostly vegan butter and vegan milk and stuff like okay. that. So, so riddle me this. Uh, yeah. uh, now that I know that I'm lactose intolerant, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm having the oat milk instead yeah. of the mm -hmm. regular milk. Why the fuck is oat milk cost the same amount as regular milk? Regular milk, you got to keep a whole cow going. You know, you can make oats your use, own use. oat milk. It's oats. It's water. It's in a blender. Maybe a little bit of sweetener, something to change it. That's it. You're done. Oh. Yeah. Yep. No, there's a whole like system. That literally, why the, why the that one thing that Ashley should dollars. should not have yeah. left for. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, truly, that's that's all it is. 
Why is it so expensive? Because because they're making it for big you. Oats. Yeah, it's yeah. because it's big of the oats. Quaker man. It's big yep. oats. Yeah. Fucking Quakers. Big coming Quake. At you. Old buckle hats. Fucking driving yeah. up the fucking driving up the Will price of the package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gonna get, get you the kiss grab. Yeah. Oh, we, we want to know that next week you come in and you're like, you know what I've learned? I've learned how to make oat milk. Guys, taking time. I'm making oat milk. Ash, milk. Ash has yeah, made oat, oat milk oat before. Milk. I, I eat oats and then I squirt, squirt my titties. <laughs> yeah. my titties. <laughs> I'm lactating now. You want to know what? It's good that Ashley's not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, Bryce. Hi. Are you? <laughs> yeah. That was uh, the least enthusiastic response. Because he knows what's going to happen next. We've hey, never hey, uh, uh, hey what's up, guys? Uh, first things first. Um, I wanted to bite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Welcome back. It's still the pre show green room, great room holding thing. Bryce Castillo here, bringing you more of the beginning of the show, which is what this is. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. It's still. October 17th, 2023. Let's go to our Discord. Discord.greatnight.tv. And uh, we are going to see. Uh, uh, we're going to see who had some birthdays in our wonderful birthday Borner channel. Where you let us know when uh, uh, when there are birthdays coming up. We have got a few here today. It's the 17th. Uh, let's see here. Mbombo. Mbombo Cube's birthday was last week on the 11th. Happy birthday, Mbombo. And Don't Panic VU's uh, dad's birthday was yesterday. Turned 80. Happy birthday, Papa Panic. If you want to get your shout outs for the birthday burner, please go to our Discord, discord.greatnight.tv. Oh, 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 okay. It's my birthday on Friday. Me. Happy birthday to me. Everybody, happy birthday, Annalisa. Woo, 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 woo. She's turning 29. Now, we. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, we've got a little bit of time here. Let's do a little bit of a uh, critical racing theory. We've got uh, this weekend, the, the United States Grand Prix here in Austin, Texas at the Circuit of the Americas. It's gonna be a good, I think it'll be a good race. Uh, the championship's over. Uh, the, the big question is, what is gonna happen with Sergio? We're still talking about Sergio Perez. He is in the absolute fastest car by a country mile, and 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 he is second in the whole championship to Max, but he he's almost like double double the amount of points away. Max has only got double the points on him. It's 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 it. We're getting to the point where where it's it's tough for Checo. Checo really needs to uh, justify being in this really fucking fast car. Uh, there is a rumor, there was rumors and who knows that Sergio might announce either here uh, at the America Grand Prix or next week at the Mexican Grand Prix that he might retire from F1, which, uh, given the timing would be the thing he would have to do at the moment. There's nowhere else for him to go. He's in the I'm not joking. He's in the fastest fucking car on the grid. It has been faster than everyone all year long. And he's not, he's, he's making hay, but he could be making more hay. That's the thing here. It's, it's, it's close. It shouldn't even be fucking close with this car. In any case, uh, that's, that's uh, one of the big stories coming up uh, over the next few weeks in, uh, in formula one. Uh, another thing, uh, they, uh, 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 there's there's going to be a Formula One documentary. I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, 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 one Keanu Reeves, you might know him from The Matrix. Uh, he's he is narrating a, a documentary about uh, Braun GP, uh, the team that is now currently Mercedes, um, and uh, that's coming up. Uh, that's coming out soon. I, I know we've we've heard about it. Uh, that is uh, in November, November fifteenth. On uh, Disney Plus, I think that'll be an interest. That'll be an interesting story. There's a a, a good history there between uh, the Braun folks um, and how that uh, got uh, got a lot of success. So um, that's that. We we also had oh my goodness, we had the Qatar Grand Prix uh, this past weekend, two weeks ago. Hmm. I'm, yes, I'm, 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 I'm certain you're saying Qatar as in the the uh, the. the 
country, but but what I heard was the guitar Grand Prix, which sounded fucking rad. Like, what if you had to drive a car with a rock band guitar and you, okay. you had a gas button and you had to strum and, and kind okay. of go, What are the other four uh, buttons do? Right. And shift up. And then finally, like in the in the squirrely parts, you had to go to the up at the top, then go back, and then you had the whammy bar. Sure. Yeah. I bet, you know what? I think that that setup for a race will probably cause less drivers to get fucking sick than the Qatar Grand Prix did the two weeks back. Uh, it was so hot in Qatar that uh, uh, one, one of the drivers, one Logan Sergeant, Sergeant Logan, uh, uh, had to retire from the race because he was so heat struck, struck him. He was already sick. Uh, I think they, they were saying he was already a little sick that weekend. But the 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 unassailable heat, the the lack of wind, even at night, uh, was very difficult. There's a shot of uh, George Russell in his Mercedes, and he's going down the, the, the start-finish straight. It's a very fast straight. And you can see him raising his hands above the wheel over the little windshield that they have, to get to try to get any air or wind into his gloves at all, um, it was it was a it was a difficult uh, a difficult race. Uh, I, I, well, uh, there is one side effect, which is to uh, kind of dissolve the debate about whether or not drivers are athletes or not. Yeah, uh, because like that kind of makes me feel like, damn, I wouldn't want to do that. You'd have to be in excellent health to do mm. that. Yeah, uh, I want everybody in the chat to go look for uh, hotel room rates during Vegas F1. Oh, here it is. This is I want this everybody is in the chat to go look for uh, uh, room rates. Bryce, hi. How much? Like, what? Three hundred bucks that I that I just have to. Uh, would you go to the raise? first? Would you go to the first Vegas? F1, a moment in time for a uh, sport that you love. Uh -huh. uh, would, would, would you would you do it? Would would, would three hundred? Well, yeah. Let, let, or, let, let, all right, yeah, five hundred. Five hundred? Yeah. Uh, he already said yes to three hundred. This is terrible no, 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 negotiation. No, 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 no. Yeah, but no, I'm trying to get. He's using my money. No, he yeah, wants more yeah. my no, money. No, no, no. I'm trying to get him up so <laughs> I can bully him into doing it. Okay, all right. But, 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 like, uh, I, I, Bryce, I don't want to make a big deal about this, but you know, at our pre-meeting, Justin and I were talking about, you know, what we really need is field reporting, boots on the ground, yes, out there. Let's expand Give our social media presence, info, and and let's have. If, if you have uh, made F1 a part of this show, yep. yeah. So let's expand and let's have Bryce be at Vegas F1 doing content. So I would like for everybody in the chat yeah. to be finding what strip hotel rooms are because <laughs> they are apparently plummeting. They are plummeting. Uh, that, that, that is true. That, that is that's the story. The story right, is let, that let's figure out the best, <laughs> cheapest flight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure out the cheapest. Well, we need we need to lock them into we need to lock them into these hotel rooms know, before, yeah, and, yeah, and then and then we'll ship them off. We're we're, we're going to need a whole budget for this. We will. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. It starts with the rooms though, because the yeah. rooms are the ones that were insane, and now all of a sudden, uh, based on mm -hmm. many different many many people are saying that <laughs> Eric uh, Adams, what are you doing here? They are <laughs> they are uh, 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 crashing because not as many people want to pay the insane amounts that they were asking. Turns out there's only so many Saudi princes. <laughs> right. And they've all bought their tickets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bre Brett and I were looking at uh, at uh, ticket prices for uh, some of the like uh, assigned seating at F1, and they were like, what, Brett? Like $1,700, yeah. yeah, $2,000. Just for the seat. Yeah, but what if you didn't really care where you were? Uh, th those tickets already sold out. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, so you wouldn't be in a grandstand or anything like that, but you could be in an awesome hotel, like listening to everything and watching it on all these TVs showing this awesome race. Like, that'd I mean, be wait, an amazing. I mean, thing. I mean, you, Stand on your balcony, maybe. You're telling me that well, if you show up yeah. there, like, not one single person is going to decide to not go or. Hmm. I mean, decide to not go. I, I, mean, I mean, there's two times you buy a ticket, there's, you know. 
Every day you buy and the day you sell it. And you just show up and then you're like, hi, I'm here with my daughter. <laughs> I'm not, you, I, you know what? That one's not going to work for me as well, but okay. I mean, yep, you can. It always works out. Uh, maybe we can find you a daughter. You want a hey boss, Bryce. <laughs> I want to teach him the yeah. ways. I, I want to give him a blue belt in hay bossing. I'm not seeing any prices in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> chat, for the love of fucking God, I need your help right now. I want to bully Bryce into making this trip a reality That's right. on this show tonight. If no one finds links, I won't be able to use the title card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so just... I told Bryce that there's going to be a professional bullying campaign <laughs> For him, so we need to get that started. Oh, Sunbun's on it. Sunbun says, hey, hold on. Okay. You know he's going to find the right one. He's going to find the right one. I, I mean, th there was a rumor today <laughs> online that the, that the horseshoe, the former Bally's, which is on the track, uh, was selling for 89 bucks. Wow. 89 bucks a night. Uh, we've got some here. This says uh, 329 a night, 315. 337. Mm. We're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, uh, somebody find the uh, 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 Tuscany. See, when, see what the Tuscany is. When is this? How far off is it? Uh, November. November. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. All right. Is, yeah. the, is everyone doing another race in between the Austin race and the Vegas race? Yes. Uh, there is Mexico the week after. Jesus in Christ. Yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, but uh, 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 the Austin race will be good. Uh, you know what? This will be a good Austin uh, race. Uh, if you have yes, a good you're right that none of those are stripped. But Tuscany is on the uh, uh, on the track. On the track. Right. Oh yeah, I, yeah. There are some there are some hotels that are in inside the track but are not on the strip. Yeah, yeah. Huh. All right. There are we will we will we will that figure that out. This will be a running. Track? So yeah. it's it's inside where the route is I see. but it is not on the strip because like it, there's only so much strip like that the strip will be a straightaway got it but there's other shit that is you know street racing so there yeah. we go what do you think they're gonna put on uh what do you think they're gonna put on the on the big sphere on the msg sphere during the race do you think uh, it'll be like a big car uh, a nutsack i was about to say the tip of a dick <laughs> just kind of weeping with pre-cum <laughs> yep <laughs> Why is it weeping if you're also going to call it pre -cum? Because it also has tears. <laughs> oh, I see. That's a salt. The cum has tears. Because it's, it's sad. Because we need that's, to how, that it's that's sad. how high the DPI is. The DPI is you can tell that the cum is crying. Uh, we're getting some reports here. Excalibur 201, MGM 286 a night, Luxor 212 a night. Luxor and MGM, I believe, are past the track. Uh, but here we go. I like this. So, I like so, this. So okay. the whole gimmick is that they're actually racing around the strip. They're on. They're going to be on the strip. This long straightaway here at the from twelve Bryce, all the way up to fourteen. You've got to go see this. It would be great. I mean, and, and you don't have to like. Why would you need seats? You, you could just be in any of these hotels and watch it happen. Uh. Well. Yeah. And I mean. I, well. I, I don't know. Uh. <laughs> uh. We did get something here. Uh. 1800 1500 600 400 257 at Mandalay. All right. 270 at New York. Mandalay's a little far down, but that's good. 189 at Excalibur. And I can throw in a 4-day pack of tickets for $5,000. Oh my goodness. $5,000 is the single highest number I've ever seen associated with the Excalibur Hotel. <laughs> 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 Unless you were calculating a slot winning in pennies, <laughs> you've never seen the number 5,000. Like, maybe that's how much they paid for one of the horses in the Tournament of Champions. Oh, Harris is right in the middle of Got there. Here. Harris 209, Flamingo 239, Horseshoe 250. All right, start start the show. Start the show. Okay. This is going to be a running theme. All right. Okay. We're All right. Ready. Let's do our final checks here before we get into the show. Of course, so you can support us at any time at patreon.com slash great night. That website is available at all time. At all hours of the day. So please make sure you visit it. All time? <laughs> all time? All right, let's do our final checks. Annalisa? Uh, yes. Nathan? Hello. Uh, Brett? Hello, friend. Brian? Yo, yo! Justin? Yo, yo, yo. The chat of us, Johnny! Yeah, 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 yeah! Thank you so much for joining us on a Tuesday. Let's get started with the show. Brett, are you ready? Yes. All right, I will count you in. All right. In. 